Hello everyone. Um, <clears throat> Anna, this is your beautiful picture of the Bass Rock and I'm set up here. This is the acrylic practice paper I've got and I've got your photograph as a screenshot on my phone. I've just taped it to the table, side of the table here. Beautiful day. I'm out in the garden studio basking in the sunshine. I had one hour of sleep last night, would you believe it? Because um, I put it down to and I mean, I feel fine, but I'm just going nicely slow today. I put it down to a late coffee and enthusiasm to write the newsletter, which I did do last night, so it'll be out shortly. Now, Anna, I was having a look at this, and it's for everybody, really. But looking at the photograph, and you'll see it on, on Facebook, it, those of you who um, you may maybe not be able to see it here. But um, I reckon, Anna, that it's simply ultramarine blue watered down. I mean the top left corner is a little bit darker. Sorry, I'll tape the microphone lead so it's not shaking all around the place and annoying everyone. Tip my friend gave me. There we are, that's better. Okay, so I'll just make a start on this painting. I'm, I'm not going to do the full painting. At least I don't think I will. I'll use masking tape again here. Now what I'm starting with is the top corner. I've put a bit of tape here in order to create more of the shape, the rectangle, the shape that I'm seeing. I felt it was closer to square than my sheet of paper is. And I couldn't find my own red acrylic. The only red I could find was from the, the, box, the box of um, Magic Fly acrylic paint that um, Claire recommended and I love it actually. But it's just strange that I can't find my own um, Windsor and Newton reds. The reds are all gone. Right, so um, I did think I could put some, maybe a touch of Payne's grey actually into the blue up in that corner in order to create more of the dark that's there and to have it less uh, colourful, I suppose. But there's something exciting about doing a sky. Like I posted um, James Morrison's skies on Facebook rest in peace. I saw him giving a demonstration once at the Scottish Art Gallery and uh, he he made magnificent skies. I remember him saying that the darks are under the clouds but he worked in oil in, in a way that we're kind of using the acrylic here actually quite thinly applied. He used a rabbit rabbit skin size on his paper I remember but it was the same surface as this a kind of a shiny shiny surface. I really liked um, how he how he painted quite thinly with the oil. Okay. And you know, um, I really enjoy these runs and drips that can happen and the textures that we can get from the acrylic paint too. If I use the biggest, I might as well use the biggest brush. It's a, it's a hot day now so I'm not too worried about putting so much water in. I think it'll dry fairly quickly. And if it doesn't, I can always print off some of the wash with um, kitchen paper. It is very wet there, isn't it? It's very wet. So, and what I'm, I'm just going to lift off the very wet bit. What I'm suggesting is that you use, um, yeah, so I'm changing my tack there. And instead of putting it on with loads of water, I'm going to scumble the blue on so that it will be thinly applied but not so wet. Scumbling is this kind of, what I call it, scumbling. It's kind of cross-hatching, I think, pressing the paint into the surface without too much fluidity. So I'm leaving the spaces white where I see the clouds mostly occupying those spaces. And just kind of finding the direction of the clouds, even the sweep up the way there. Um, yeah, I'm noticing too that the sea is quite light in relation to the sky. In fact, the sea is almost the colour of the, the white clouds, really. And this is causing me you now to consider the old Payne's grey. I put some of that in, especially in the top right corner, top left corner there. If you wanted to paint more thickly, if you wanted a more painterly surface, what you could do is mix your ultramarine blue with, with white paint instead of the white of the paper, then it's the white paint that's creating the lighter tone. 
I'm trusting that my head isn't in your way. Gosh, I hope it's not. I can't really see the screen because it's such a bright day here. So this now is the Payne's Grey being scumbled on over the area that had been kind of fluid in the, the bluish, the ultramarine blue acrylic and it's already drying. I'm kind of enjoying the texture, the weathery feel of the brush strokes on the sky here. It's a great photograph actually and I've got some lovely clouds and of course the bass rock is always a fascinating composition to capture. I think there have been many, many paintings of it. Just wetting the paint a little bit more and adding a touch of blue into the paint's grey. Just want to create a little bit more drama in the dark of the sky at the top there. So if you don't have paint's grey, I'm not sure if I put it on the list or not, you could always mix cadmium, you know, alizarin crimson and the uh, dark green either Jenkins or Viridian dark green together and that will give you a Payne's grey as well. Or the other thing you could do is simply to instead of Payne's grey you could use burnt umber to mix with the ultramarine blue I think it would give you a very similar colour if not the same. And practice like I've got a piece of practice paper here on the side that I can use no, just lob a bit on there. I mean, it's quite a calm sky, but I still love to have some bit of flamboyance, I suppose. And this um, this lovely thing that happens, you know, when you wipe away the acrylic. Right. And these are just simple, cheap, thin, quite thin brushes um, that I'm using. That's a one inch brush. When I say quite thin, I mean this way. And this one is um, is not thin, it's hairier. And I've had it for a long time, as you can see. So suitably distressed. Right. So the underside of that cloud now also is almost as dark as the, as the, the sky above. This is actually attached to the cloud itself. I wonder whether it would be a good idea to make it slightly different from the sky colour so that we read it as cloud shadow rather than sky. And maybe cerulean blue is the one to put in there to give that just a slightly different colour. This this um, cloud, the underside of the cloud. I think it just needs to be given a value that's slightly different. It doesn't critical that it's exactly the same as what we're seeing. Okay. Just a little bit of I don't want those straight lines going across there. Maybe the kitchen paper is quite a nice tool to create a little bit more of the undulating feel. And there's a hairier feel up here. I'm still able to, because this is the practice paper, it's allowing me to still lift off, even although the paint is dry. I'm actually using the, I'm using the smooth side of the practice paper here, which I prefer. The grainy side is, is great too, you know, either. Okay. So having found the general shape of both clouds and the general tone of the sky, um, I'm going to focus now on the sky beneath, the sky that's down here. And I'm not too concerned that the bass rock hasn't been indicated yet, because it's generally darker down there, and the, the lighter grey area of the bass rock on top can be painted. Um, it's, it's lighter than the sky behind, so this part is darker than the sky behind and the top of the bass rock is lighter than the sky behind, which will give it a feeling of a dome-shaped, three-dimensional um, island. And I can use the paint thinly on the dark and thickly on the light in the island, so I'm not worried about you know, being able to cover. I'm not worried that I won't be able to cover the sky if I paint it all before the, the rock. But I guess now that I am putting another tone on the sky, 
there's no harm in leaving a bit of a space where the bass rock can to, for the bass rock to fill and the other thing I could do if just in case I might leave the sea almost white there so the thing I could do would be to cover the line where the sea meets the sky and then I'd have the freedom to really richly paint up to the edge of the horizon line knowing that it would be straight because horizon really in general unless you've got a particular bent towards quirky abstraction generally I think horizon lines no matter how abstract are kind of more comfortable to observe straight <laughs> which is maybe why some of my videos are deeply sickening <laughs> when the uh, camera is at a jaunty angle I'm just thinking if Lily was here now she had things to say about the other reason why they might be sickening I shouldn't encourage that today I'm quite liking this um, the drama of the dark to light of the, the sky and you know I'm also loving that I'm really inspired simply working from a small screen it's really exciting to feel that possibility that all winter long we can work from photographs of summer scenes and bring that light into our hearts you know the darkness because um, I think this is this is exciting I haven't done this before like this you know so anyway, this is Payne's Grey in Ultramarine Blue again, and you can see I'm deepening the tone now that I've brought some colour in down here. I'm deepening the tone above. I'm finding some kind of cumulus shapes just with my finger, dipped in water actually, can help to finding the kind of slightly rounded quality of the, is it cumulus or cirrus? I think cumulus are the clouds that are slightly rounded. And I'm still not too, um, not feeling too precious that I don't, don't want also to have some weathered splashes in there. I'll do a bit more to the sky down here. Now I'm mixing the cerulean blue with the ultramarine blue this time. And I could put in some white paint there. Will we try the white paint as opposed to the white paper. Even just to have it for the clouds themselves, I might put a touch of thicker paint on where the clouds are lightest. I think that would work. I may not use it here because I think that's actually quite a good colour. So it's cerulean blue mixed with ultramarine blue. Now this cerulean blue, I don't know if it has much of a difference but it's just a hue rather than I just couldn't get the cerulean blue neat that time. So I've got the cerulean blue hue but it looks the same to me really. There'll be some purists now who'll say, oh yeah it's not at all the same and uh, I'll stand corrected but for the purposes of the sky it doesn't read as too different from the blue the cerulean blue I'm used to I'm still looking more at the clouds than I am at the page because I want to allow their, the feel of them to fill me up like as I'm painting it and the contrast between the kind of breezy clouds and this solid almost opaque nature of the sky there which does make me feel like putting a touch of white paint in there just let's see how that goes and I'll put some fluidity in because depending on the on the dryness of the conditions that you're working in like your paint can dry really quickly the acrylic paint can dry very quickly so um, you don't want a big blob of white paint right in the middle of your blue sky unless of course it's a deliberate cloud but I'm liking the kind of creamier texture of the sky below the clouds um, that's being created by the white paint being mixed with it and that's titanium white that I use I'm just cross hatching so that the so that the line, the linear feel of it is diminished and that we get a feel for the whole sky 
being of a similar texture. Even down here, I think I could do with a little bit more of the white. So I'm dampening my brush. I'm not making it completely wet either, because this isn't somewhere that I want there to be too many runs or anything. I do want it to have an opacity, if that's the right way to say that. You know, not to be see-through and not to be textured here, really. Okay. And of course, this uh, the bass rock is slightly to the left of the composition, maybe. I could even indicate it. And when I'm painting things like an island like that now, I would see how many times would that island fit in. To the left, you'd fit about two islands. And on the right hand side, I'd fit one, two, nearly three. Uh, yeah, so I think that's about the right size. I might go slightly left, slightly right. Anyway, so I may as well just lift out using the kitchen paper and some just wetting by wetting it maybe as well lift out some of that shape there here's Lily now come to give Maisie a bit of a talking to and I'll give her a talking to if Maisie doesn't stop yelping in a minute Here we go. I wanted to put some brown. This is Van Dyke brown. I wanted to include this and just start another palette, I think, here. This is what the Van Dyke Galleria acrylic Van Dyke looks like. Van Dyke brown. And to me, that will give me a different dark than the Payne's grey and ultramarine blue. I don't want her coming over here, Lily, if she's lively. If she's lively now, you keep her on that side, okay? I'm doing a video. So the bottom of the bass rock, I think, could do with a different tone from the top of the sky, you see. There's something nice to wipe away there, I'd say. A couple of drips and runs in the sky, I quite like that. We're never far from rain in Scotland anyway, so I might as well inject a few droplets. And if I was painting outside, there would definitely be droplets on there, I'd say any length of time outside and there'll be some bit of precipitation. I just put on some of the brown there because I wanted to use it to lift off. Um, something about putting colour on to lift off rather than just water on its own. And I am including some of that brown into the sky there because it does read to me as though it's even darker than I've got it. Just a little bit at the top, I don't think. Well, it is starting to look too like the island colour, so I'll put some green into it as well. It's just that that top left corner being so dark is a kind of compositional feature that I quite like. The other thing with acrylic is, if you're not used to using it, keep putting your brush into water. Because you'll know if you do use acrylic often that it dries quickly in your brush as well, and it hardens to a plasticky. hardens to a plasticky effect. I just wanted to change the shape of where the white cloud was there too. Yeah. Okay, now what am I doing? Bass rock. And we still have our masking tape intact there, which is handy. So now the bass rock is going to have some Payne's grey, some ultramarine blue and some Van Dyke brown in it. And I'm using a fairly big brush. The main thing for me here is to get the proportion of light and dark as um, true as I can and the slant of the island as true as I can as well. It's going down that way. I hope the battery doesn't give out my phone. And there is some dark there but there's also something that reads almost the same as the sky colour. So it's as though the sky and the bass rock together after the dark bit there almost merge. Let's see if that'll work. This is a beautiful sunny day in Midlothian and the children are playing in the gardens. There's lots of um, action around here. Now I'm finding the blue of the sky again as it meets the rock there. And it may be that I leave the top of the rock where all the bird shit is, just the white of the paper maybe. 
but it looks like it does have more of a grey it's a grey white and for it not to be the same as the sky again I'm going to use some of this mauve no, it's pale violet no you don't have to have this it's just because I can for my red I suppose I could use I'll just use this red here which is very similar to crimson so if I use that it'll be the same more or less as what you have and I'm going to use that to make what am I using it for to make a grey I think I'll need some green if I'm making a grey with red red and it's opposite those are the colours that make grey the um, opposites on the colour wheel so red and red and green are opposite each other Let's see how this works out sap green and the almost crimson red I mean it's a lighter crimson but it's fairly good no this is red and green together are not ever going to really give me the kind of bluish hint that the island is but I'm happy that I started out with that because it'll give it a different feel, the grey, to the sky. So I'm putting the ultramarine blue into the red and green mix now in order to make a grey for myself. That'll be just a tiny bit different. And sure, I might as well stick some. No, I won't because you don't have it. I'm just going to stick in the purple. I'll stick the white in and, and see if it reads as then. So this is my practice piece over here. I'm kind of happy with that colour. Yeah, I'm happy enough with that. I might put a touch more red in it to give it just that bit more of um, a warm grey. A warm bird shit grey. Right, so let's see. And if it's not lighter than the sky, I need to either make the sky lighter or the... I need to, sorry, either make the sky darker or the bass rock lighter. And actually, I want to do this first. I want to do the dark, the mid-tone in the bass rock first. I'll get on to the rest of the sky in a minute. I want to do the um, mid-tone in the sky first. So I'm using a touch of cerulean blue in there now. Yeah, I hope you're keeping up here. <laughs> I just wanted to put some cerulean blue because it seemed to me like um, it started to get a bit bluer, but not the sky blue colour as we, gonna, as we went across. And then there's just a little bit that's slightly lighter down there. I would work up to the light. Um, the brush is on its last legs. I can feel it wobbling in the furrow. And maybe a little bit more now of the um, dark over there. So that the rock uh, looks like it's all one piece. I want there to be different edges. I'll just add in a little bit of distress. I was going to say it's a speciality of mine, but that would be putting myself down, wouldn't it? <laughs> Adding distress. I don't add distress. And actually, the older I get, the more keen I am to avoid or to uh, turn a blind eye to drama so that it doesn't fuel it. Now, there's some dark, there's some. Um, the sky is dark and behind the island at the top there so I'm putting almost pure white in not really pure white it's more the colour of the masking tape because it's dirtied by what's already on the palette a mixture of every sort of thing but it's more white than anything else creamy white I would say so I'm using that to define this, the edge where the bass rock meets the sky and where the bass rock meets the shadow on the front edge of it there and I think I'll define the sky a little bit more clearly again. I'll just make it a tiny bit darker as it meets that light there. Because from the photograph I can see that the sky is darker than the rock up here at the top. And it's a bit nondescript there as I was saying. And then over on this side over here, still, still the sky is darker than the last rock is there. And I'll address the outside of that shape now because I don't want it to dry with an edge out there. So I've just wet it and dissipated it out the way. Kind of spreading the thick paint so that it gets thinner and thinner. And just 
with the kind of, kind of cross-hatched damp brush, ma brush marks it um, dissolves the edge of the paint a bit I'm making my sky a little bit darker in the process though because I haven't really cleaned my brush very well the water very well so I'll smooth it off a bit again just a bit of water into the kitchen paper works too yeah I'm okay with it having a bit of texture that bit of the sky okay and um, I'm glad of the kitchen paper today and what I was going to do there now is to deepen where's the brown over here I want to deepen the dark of the bass rock where it meets the sky and it's darker than the sky here so darken that edge a little bit that's good okay and then with incredibly dirty water I'm going to attempt because I'm not going to get up and disturb the whole kerfuffle I'm going to attempt to put some clean white on the centre of the, the clouds just to give them a billowsness and a slightly cloud-like feel where the white is fluffiest so just little islands of cross-hatched white is what I'm applying here in places because I too quite like the way that the um, I'm not standing back at all, my back is leaning against the studio so I might find that I don't like it at all when I stand back but I feel like in general I can lean back especially working at arm's length from the painting it's good to, um, it's good to have that at least that distance especially when I'm actually painting but I would be erring on the side of doing less now because I could have already enough here and then um, you may not decide to put any thick paint in for the sky and that's perfect as well I think James Morrison rarely as far as I know used very much white anyway in his sky I don't think he put very thick paint on there at least it doesn't look like that to me but I do remember him talking about how the underside of the cloud will have a bit of shadow on it like it's here slightly shadowed so I want to do that with this one and then I'm going to stop and I'll take a picture of it and show you um, on Facebook as well those of you who are in the landscape painting group and get in touch if you're interested to see and hear more about that we're having a lot of fun we're kind of getting going now I feel like by week three by week three in the landscape course I'm kind of finding my feet and I get the feeling that everyone else is in a similar, in a similar way of finding their way too I hope my head isn't in the way every time I come across there so I put the grey in but I didn't want the transition to be too severe so I put some thick white paint on top right let me finish that side of the, of the sky I need to finish over here don't I what would happen if I did just use a kind of a watery mixture? It might be kind of exciting. Yeah, sometimes just getting there quickly is the thing. And sitting back and leave, leaving it alone too, maybe. Yeah, I think I'll leave it at that.